Welcome back everybody to another episode of Tie and Gig Builds. Today we're gonna make a reactive coffee table. It has animations, this thing's made of WS2812 BLEDs so you can put regular animations with those but we also added a little hint of Tie and Gig Builds. We added proximity sensors which sense when an object is over it and then it reacts by turning on the lights in that area. Get ready to watch us suffer. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready to watch us spend a lot of time working on this. It's gonna be a long battle, but it came out amazing, and we're gonna show you guys how we do it. Builds. Too easy with the builds. <laughs> Come on. And so basically, how this is gonna work is we're gonna create a bunch of nodes on this paper composite board here, and then shove this paper composite board into the coffee table. With the glass top, you'll be able to see through it, so those nodes will light up when a motion is activated over it. So for example, if I were to put a glass on top of the nodes, any node that's under that glass will light up. A node is basically just two infrared receivers, two infrared emitters, and then we're gonna use one single WS12B LED in the center of them. And what's gonna happen is when these infrared emitters are gonna send infrared light coming this way, and if an object is in close enough to it, these infrared receivers are gonna receive that infrared light reflected off an object and the voltage is gonna change. That's gonna to signal to the Arduino which node to light up. And the Arduino is gonna know which WS12B LED to light up. That's basically the whole concept, except there has to be a circuit involved in order to receive signals from these photodiodes, these infrared receivers, to light up these infrared emitters at a certain time, and to also control the WS2812B LEDs. Okay, that was a doozy. That that took about, I would say, an hour upwards of an hour to an hour and a half. Now I'm gonna go and drill the actual holes for each node. I ended up with 96 nodes, eight by the width and 12 across. So I needed five holes for each node. I need the WS2812 VLED, the two IR emitters, and the two IR receivers. Okay, so I just drilled out every single hole. I think there's 480. We had 96 times two of the iron emitters, 96 times two of the receivers, and 96 of just the WS2812 LEDs. Yeah, so now I just gotta run through 480 holes and hot glue them with LEDs. Okay, I just finished the tedious process of gluing all these LEDs in, so now I'm gonna start doing the other, I think there's around 390 or so. <sighs> Let's go, round two. It's whatever, honestly. It is. It's yeah. really whatever with me at this point. So originally we were gonna do the node with this, these five LEDs here. And if you raise your hand over it, then this one would light up. But we've come to realize that if you were to place a cup here, for example, you block these two nodes, these two would kind of go on, but these two wouldn't. So we think it's best actually to make this the node and it'll control all four of these LEDs. For our photodiodes, we're gonna use yellow and gray. Uh, yellow being positive, gray being negative, and for our emitters, we're going to use this orange strands that are hooked up in series to just connect the two. We're going to go through each node, okay? Each and every. Each and every node, and we're going to do this for every node, connecting each LED. Alrighty. Then we're going to go a second wave after that and hook up longer wires, which we'll use to connect to the circuit boards. Okay. So let's get started. The 
arsenal went well, we tested it, everything works out. So now okay. we just gotta batch 76 more out. Yeah, of the nodes. So 77 total. The test run went pretty well. So we're gonna run through the rest of these for you guys here. It's been a long day. 10 hours later. <laughs> Got all these nodes put in. Not quite done, but almost done for the day. Yeah, yeah. Pretty definitely. exhausting. Very exhausting. Gig, how many cuts do you think you did? Um, over a thousand. Just finished wiring up. I think there's seven wires a node and there's 77 nodes. So that's like 539 wires. And now we have to solder all these wires into the circuit boards. The sweatshop starring Tyler and Gig. We just printed these PCBs out. We got them. There were some errors in the first version. I fixed them for the second version, but the errors can be bypassed by doing some weird stuff that we're going to do now. I forgot to add a power port, power in and power out. I also forgot to add a daisy chain out to this, but we can also just take the back and solder them. So it's probably what we're going to do. Yeah. And I mean, it's not like we're not going to be soldering already. Really quick, on the top we have a shift register. This is controlled by the Arduino. And the shift register is gonna send a signal to an array of Darlington transistors, a Darlington array. And these transistors, this chip here, is gonna be able to turn on and off the IR emitter. And so we're gonna use the shift register to turn on and off these IR emitters through this Darlington array, since it needs an external power source, in this case, five volts. Then on the bottom, we have a multiplexer. This is just gonna take signals from the photodiode and it's gonna tell the Arduino how close an object is to an individual photodiode. Each board has two columns. Each column is gonna represent an actual column on the table itself. We have 11 columns and seven rows. So like I said, we have 11 columns of these, so we need six boards, and then we have another multiplexer board which we're going to use to take all these multiplexer signals and reduce it even further so the Arduino only needs a little bit. After about four hours or so on and off doing some things I was able to complete the power pads. They're just going to be full of five volts. And now I'm just gonna hook up a wire to connect all of them to the bottom to do ground. And then I'm gonna have the PCBs connected. And we're gonna connect everything to the PCBs from power and ground here. And let's get started with that. difficult part the most time-consuming part is done I should say and you can see there's some blue and black wires left over that's because I didn't have the length to reach them and so I couldn't include them I could if I added more wire to it but I'm afraid that these pin headers you can see how close they are and you can see the wires are extremely close and I think that if I tried to even fill the whole board up with them I think the design of the PCB was just poor and that we'd have a lot of shorts and it would just be very frustrating. So it's definitely something I'm gonna fix in the next version of the PCB, but for now, I'm just gonna do the first five rows. Now comes the part of connecting each PCB and daisy chaining the shift registers. I'm gonna be doing those with these wires here. Um, I also need to connect ground and hot to locations in the PCBs. I'll be doing that as well. back 
second action, the Arduino's ready. That's right, so we're just gonna rip these pin headers off and then we're gonna plug all the inputs in here and we'll see how it works. Boom. That's right. Are you kidding me? You asked. It's, it's back, back baby. baby. This table, it's finally complete. Yes. <laughs> it took a very long time, but I am so excited. It, it was worth every we kept, minute. We kept pushing the date back. Further and further, further and further. further. And finally today, it is complete. And it came out like the banger we thought it would be. We have these animations running, really cool animations, and you don't even need to get the, the proximity sensors working to get the animations going. You can yeah. just add 20, WS 2812 BLEDs. Yeah, that. the proximity is just a bonus. Oh, wanted, yeah. You know we do the bonus builds. <laughs> <laughs> get the old coffee table out of the way. We got brand new spanking new one right here. That's right. Get this new and improved version. All the links to all of the circuit diagrams, the PCB, the Gerber files. If you're interested in doing this yourself, you can just order the PCB for like 50 bucks to get 20 of them. You can do it on a smaller scale or a bigger scale. Yeah. I'm not gonna charge or anything for that because we did copy this design from somebody who did this previously. I'll link to that in the description where I got the inspiration from. The code for the Arduino is gonna be in the description. Everything. The way we wired up the PCB was a little weird. The, the holes were a little closer, so we redesigned it so the PCB actually works now. Next week, I actually have a little skateboard build I'm working on for you, so if you're into that kind of thing, you're not gonna wanna miss it. And then it's actually gonna ride well on one of our future builds. That's I right, I think, I think we're gonna <laughs> use that little puppy and the, something the else. The skateboard so might get used. Hold your horses, though. If you like what you saw, Please consider liking, commenting, subscribing. Next week, as Gig said, we got the skateboarding build. Yes. And that does it for this one. Uh, enjoy. Thank you for watching. Tying gig. Builds. Builds. Look at this thing. I know. It looks <laughs> sick, man. Look at this thing.